What's up? What's up, Buttercup? That was kind of weird. Uh, never a good thing when a man calls another man Buttercup. Just, just, it was no comment for me. I just does not work. Waiting for that moment to pass. Um, what do you think about people? And I, I don't want you to pick on them too much. They but just, all suck. Just give your perspective. What do you think about people who, like that lady that just walked by, the Catholic lady, that come out and they, they yell things like, that's your opinion, but they give no argument for what they're saying, and they don't want to hear God's word when we open it? Well, they are two things. I would say that they are dishonest, and they are emotional. Emotional in the sense that you, they're saying, you're saying something that they don't like, and it just uh, causes them to go in a little uh, tissy where they're uncontrolled in any sort of rational uh, cognitive approach to you know, give an answer. Number two, they're dishonest because they're not looking for answers, as you said, even when you're trying to present scripture, to see if they are uh, believing in something that is erroneous. I mean, if somebody has a case against something that I hold to, I certainly yeah. want to hear it. Now, I, I'm not saying that I don't have emotions. I'm some, you know, bah, 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 bah. But, uh, and, and sometimes those things bubble up, but it's not so overriding that I'm unwilling to hear a case and examine it. I've changed my views several times uh, when people show me my error. And so they should be willing to do the same thing. Unfortunately for uh, Catholics, it is that they're um, ignorant and the, the Romanist tradition teaches them that uh, the priest knows best. That's who they look up to. And uh, tradition sometimes trumps scripture, so that's a problem there too. Oh, yeah, I'll give you the chance, just a second. Hold on. The first thing I want to note that is, this is all based off of things you've heard about Darwin's findings, yet you yourself have not come across. So I, I, I got to wonder why why it's all of a sudden a bad thing that I'm taking the, the eyewitness testimonies of other individuals, but now you're okay in taking some other person's eyewitness testimony, supposedly, of, of Darwin. Now, that's one thing. Uh, but also, the Cambrian explosion, which you might be familiar with, uh, actually disproves a lot of the, the, this stuff uh, about the fossil record, okay? And we'll get into that in a second, but I, I, I didn't want to interject too long because you seem impatient to uh, make your point. And so I, just, I don't want to mischaracterize your argument. I don't want you to mischaracterize it as an okay. assumption. Go ahead. So, for example, I just gave you an example because you mentioned the finches, which are familiar to a lot of people, but we can see the very same thing if you take 15 species of fruit flies or 15 species of mice or whatever it is. We have a totally independent line of evidence now a century and a half later by looking at DNA to understand these are genetically distinct things. But here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the remarkable thing is macroevolution, which is the formation of new species, the only logical inference when you find genetic characters shared between two or three or four or five species is that they shared a common ancestor. Okay. Now that was first Why do you assume from that? anatomy. See, that's what I said. I, I, whoa, was I right or what? Did I call it? Because I'm saying you're assuming it's, what? It's, By the basis it's of the, the similarity in, uh, you know, fun, uh, what I say would be the function, but some people say no, no, the phylogeny. But DNA, or some people, what DNA you're saying about DNA things. percentages? Oh, look at number. What is it? No, not percentages. Um, not percentages, sir. Okay, well, it's, it's not percentages. It's not, no. Then it's, what is it? It's specifically shared characters that are unique to those species and not shared with others. It's an idea, and here let's just talk about maybe weight of opinion. The entire scientific community has tested this idea for a century and a half. What idea is that? What have they tested specifically? I, I just... Life changes. Who's all, all you're telling the entire me scientific is community you're, you're repeating what you believe and why you believe it because you said certain other scientists have said so. So therefore, that's your basis for accepting it. No, and no, no, because my laboratory for the last 23 years your has laboratory. studied, my exact laboratory has studied okay. genetic change in species and how it relates to how traits change over time. So I've spent a lot of time studying evolution really up close. And okay, so what, all sorts what of genetic colleagues. changes have you seen, and what did it produce as a result of the change? Well, we've studied the evolution of particular traits in animals to understand how traits change with genetic change over time. What are some of the more uh, rigorous details that most people wouldn't care to hear about the specifics? <laughs> most people wouldn't care to hear Well, I, I do like well, details. to understand how the functional parts of DNA have evolved, either the parts that code for proteins or the parts that direct how genes are used and you understand how those changes relate to the changes in traits. That doesn't show that one evolved to the next. 
Well, I, I'm, I'm missing your connection between the two. I'm still waiting for evidence. All you're doing is showing me your, your bias presupposition and your well, assumptions. You know, if you had a few weeks, I could... I, I have at least a few that. minutes. Spill at least me yeah. a few details, and I can review the tape. Well, I'm, I'm not... A, I like details. Please wax eloquent, sir. You want some more, you want some more details? I want... Really? I want I you to demonstrate else. your most uh, convincing proof for evolution. All the documented history, humans what? always produce humans. In fact, the empirical data would prove otherwise, contrary to the evolutionary well, view, that all we have ever seen is that which is, you know, the creature you have produces that very thing. So if you want to be scientific, you would actually say the opposite of the evolutionary adherence. Well, no, I, I would look I'm and sorry, say, that's what I would say that the evidence, because I happen to have studied the fossil record in detail, is that... Okay, tell me how a fossil proves anything other than something died. Well, you look at where it's nested in the rock history, and you have I've independent already... methods from physics to date that time, and look at the relative order. And it isn't it amazing uh, the, that no, no, mammals the, sorry, only sir, the geolo geological column or whatever is not only a circular argument of, oh, we do, do we date the, the fossils by the rock layer they're in, and then oh, over here we debate, d date no, the we, uh, rock layer by the fossils that are found we, therein. We, we date not only the that, fossils. but they are discombobulated. They're not in uh, synchronicity throughout the whole entire Earth. We date the fossils by and the science that gave us nuclear weapons. I mean, it's a science that's pretty well understood, okay? That's you just waving it's your magic in wand. You're trying to sound fancy by baptizing it with other fields of science. I mean, it's, it's, well, multiple, it's multiple lines of evidence. You want to have me over tonight? We can sip coffee. Yeah, yeah. Be <laughs> but it's multiple lines of evidence. And I think that's the important thing to share with people who might be interested in the discussion, is that it's not one line of evidence. It's not. It didn't start and end with Darwin. For 150 years, people have been pursuing this idea and using technology that comes from all sorts of other fields, fields of forensic DNA. Okay, but to deal with biological evolution, you have to deal with biology. That's right. And you said, what have I seen in so the fossil So physics record? might deal with cosmology a little bit. What, I see, something different. what I see in the Which fossil record is the succession died. of life over time, yeah. changes in traits that we see coming along. For example, the very hands that we can wave at each other. We understand a lot about the history of that structure through, through all sorts of intermediate fossils. Some of them collected by my very friends uh, in the Arctic as recently as six years ago. Irrelevant. Does, does irrelevant deal with... that they're friends or irrelevant that I trust these sources of Both. 370 million year old fossils. Both. Let's deal with evidence. All right, I'll deal with evidence. So you can look at change over time in these traits that are parts of our bodies. And that's why you can explain that we have all sorts of parts of our bodies in common with the rest of the animal kingdom. What changes? What do you mean, what changes? You said there's changes in the body over time. Well, our fingers aren't webbed. How do you know that they were before? You fossils. find fossils, all you got is bones, not flesh. No, no, you can see the fossil impressions. I mean, you must have seen... Well, yeah, I know that sometimes happens, you know? Yeah, you can, you can, so, skin, a, you can skin a dinosaur. Some people have stuff. webbed hands, some people have webbed feet. You're some right. people have... Sorry, we're uh, That's a genetic mutation. No, no, what I'm saying is, some people have uh, physical anomalies. Uh, some people have uh, what they call... That, uh, I hear fraud now over here, I think. Some people, well, there are frauds, but that's a yeah. different side thing. Uh, some people uh, have... I forget the condition. Acromegaly, you, sir. Are you familiar with what acromegaly is? Yes. Okay. Yes. Some people can find skeletons like that with a, you know, enlarged brow ridge. Oh, this is some but they guy won't, scratching but they the They won't cave. find 500 of them like that. They'll Why find. Not? <laughs> no, Dude, no, no. go to the nursing homes. I work in a hospital. I find all kinds of people with that sort of uh, no, facial I mean, feature. I do study the topic. Maybe you have something I haven't looked at, and I would like to know what that is. Well. I would send you back just to the geology. Just you don't have to argue about species yet or anything like that. Start with the geology. But if you persuade yourself, remember I brought up the uh, Cambrian explosion and how they found all of a sudden out of nowhere all these life forms and even some things that were supposed to be after coming before and below not, that period. Not out of nowhere. Not at all out of nowhere. I'm not saying, well, not instantly. Like, I mean, you even have State, Stephen Jay Gould who talks about punctuated equilibrium. And I know it's not instantly like, oh, the uh, reptile laid a egg right. that was a bird or something like that. Okay. But generally speaking, time scale wise, it is all right, so I knew, out of nowhere. I knew Stephen, Stephen Jay Gould, so I know what he okay. thought. Um, I, to look I appreciate up. the conversation. I would actually like to continue, but I really have to pee. That's, That's why I've been dancing over. Okay, so I'm going to uh, give it over to Dave and uh, be nice to him because he's a nice guy. I might be a little bit more harsh and in your face, but. <laughs>
Tom, you're a very nice guy, and you do this in a very decent, respectful manner, and, and I like it. I appreciate it sometimes, but thank you for the compliment. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass out to Dave so I can relieve myself. <laughs> I'm going to announce it over and over again to people. Yeah, I'm getting tired of hearing it. Why don't you just go to the bathroom like a normal person? <laughs>